A pleasure to me all at last, and welcome back once again to Nerf Secrets Revealed After Sought Part 2. So, of course, as you might have already guessed, there have been numerous amounts of times where some people might be a little disappointed that I haven't really covered much based on older blasters. Yet, why don't I change that? Because you may have felt disappointment then, but how's the disappointment factor now? Here we have ourselves the Dark Tag Quick 16. This is a piece that we got back in 2011, a mere six years after the Dark Tag lineup first showed up based on hindsight from successful blasters out there, like the Maverick, Firefly, and Nightfinder. Eventually, with other blasters that would come around with the formation of the End Strike line, it was no secret that Nerf would eventually begin to have big success within Hasbro's ownership. After many different ownerships had come and gone throughout the 90s and 2000s, it eventually just came down to Hasbro. And they sure did manage to perk up quite a starting point for Nerf's success. And being that this was a second series that they brought along to continue the dart tag trend, and then of course a failed slash not so existent third series they planned for 2018, I'd say the Quick 16 is certainly there for the nostalgia factor, maybe not so much for anything else. Of course, what it is, is it simply put, a mag system blaster. But unlike with a majority of cliff system or magazine blasters, this one is permanent and cannot be removed. Of course, it is basically a powerful, oh, there we go. It basically is, in fact, a powerful beast on its own stock as an unmodded because it basically does utilize some good slam fire techniques, which I will demonstrate at this moment. Oh boy. Okay. This is pretty much one big problem I've had with this blaster. It just jams constantly. And for the most part, it's basically because this clip system was in fact designed for these specific dart tag darts. And in fact tells you to put them in the clip. Of course, there have been usages of various other darts being used, although they're not as good as dart tag darts. Of course, you could use Whistler darts, and unfortunately, while micro or sonic darts might not work as effectively either. This basically does show some blasters are not necessarily made to work with all ammo. This kind of proprietary ammo configuration is a trend that happens to continue today. The new N series, for example, which I certainly will consider investing in at some point, doesn't exactly seem to hold up to many standards. And there's also the new Pro series, which came out with a few new blasters as well, but again, what's really the point? Also, I've run out of ammo here, it seems, so. I guess that's one good way to showcase what the slam fire technique is gonna do. So I guess one other thing I could try are invisible it. so. I will basically just see how a full clip can be put together. Now, I don't exactly know how to put this together. Am I gonna have to prime this or maybe I could try slam firing it? Let's see if that works effectively. Well, and you know what? I'd say in that exact regard, this blaster does seem to do a good job at working with the invisible integration. Certainly a far cry from what we had gotten from the usage of regular darts. Granted, this was made more for optimal conditions with the dart tag darts. And I guess Whistlers would work just as well, but it seems that with the usage of elite darts, it doesn't quite do so good. So make sure you keep yourself some dart tag darts or Whistlers on hand. Certainly not micro darts or Whistlers or Sonics for that matter because none of those will really work as well as the Whistler or Dart Tag Darts 
Otherwise though, this kind of proprietary ammo, the pickiness of this blaster, seems to really hurt the overall scoring. One other thing that I probably should mention though, is that this is a stock adapter, believe it or not. They have advertised about bringing stocks around to the series, but nothing ever came through. And so, this kind of stuff, unfortunately, it won't work with current stock attachments that exist at this very moment, especially ones that were made to fit on similarly sized pegs. Of course, this is much thicker than the average peg, like on the Recon or Retaliator, so I guess one could tell from a certain standpoint, it does make sense. Nerf wants to ex release more exclusive stuff for their exclusive lineup, so. Overall, I will say the Dartek Quick 16 does a pretty good job as a blaster in itself, but it definitely is a far cry from a majority of other blasters that we could have today. And if anyone wanted to get a hold of these on eBay or anything like that, definitely get yourself a good shot at buying one of these when you can. So my overall scoring on this blaster, for what it is, the not so good functionality with some darts, depending on what you're using, slam fire technique, supposed proprietary stock attachments that never came through, and a magazine that you can't remove which could make it difficult down the line, might only give this as high of a score for me as 5.5 out of 10.1. So, some disappointing factors and some that never truly deserve to be on the blaster itself. So, that overall is my personal perspective of the Quick 16 itself. And while it does work with the invisible integration as it should, I will say there's plenty more that they could do to make this thing optimal. Some mods probably would help, who knows. But anyways, I'll be back in a few more days with another new blaster in tow, and I hope you all will enjoy what I got to offer for the rest of this series.